In the previous video we used the periodic table to show how we can determine the valency for various elements and therefore write the formula for their compounds and we said that for something like potassium sulfide we would say that potassium since it is in group 1 of the periodic table has a valency of 1 sulfide being in group 16 or major group 2 of the periodic table must have a valency of 2 and we show that they would swap valencies to have the formula K2S. What we did not explain is how you determine or how you know what the valency is for elements that are in group 3 to 12, also known as the transition elements. And so what we are going to do today is two examples, or three examples of that. The first one is if you are asked to write the formula because compounds like copper iron and zinc, everything found in these transition has what's called a variable valency, is you will find that the valency will be given in brackets in Roman numerals in what we call stock notation. So in this example, copper 1 chloride, we are telling you that copper in this case has a valency of 1. Chlorine we can read as usual of the periodic table to have a valency of 1. We know that they swap valencies, which makes the formula here CuCl as our formula for copper chloride, copper 1 chloride. In the same way, and just to illustrate this, we can see that copper, when it bonds to oxygen, actually has a different valency, that being a valency of 2. So because we have given the valency, we would say here that copper has a valency of 2. Oxygen, we also know, has a valency of 2 from the periodic table, which means that these can be simplified and swap to form Cu. O, copper oxide. This is slightly more complicated when you are given the formula and asked to write down the name for this compound and we can show how that is done here in this example iron oxide. So we immediately know from the periodic table that oxygen has a valency of 2 which would have swapped and become that 2 that we see at the iron there. This 3 that the oxygen has here must be the number that has come from iron. So we know that this iron has a valency of 3 when bonding with oxygen. So when we write the formula, we must include that stock notation saying that this is iron 3 oxide. And then the most complicated way in which this can be asked is something like zinc sulfate. Once again, we know that sulfate has a valency of 2. We do not know the valency of zinc because it is a transition element, but what we can see here is that neither of these have numbers down here, which means that zinc must have a valency that is similar or exactly the same as sulfates so that they can cancel out and simplify, which means that the correct name for zinc sulfate would be zinc with a valency of 2 sulfate.